we're with Broadcast Amsterdam, so okay. we make community television. Yeah. Uh, we're using DSLR cameras at the moment, yeah. and I tend to use this mobile this cam. Uh, yeah. But we are looking at options for mounting a, a sound on the camera, but mm -hmm. also clip mics. Sure, uh, yeah. Come with me, we've yeah. got exactly... Uh, so, we've got a couple of different wireless solutions. Yeah. Uh, we're also, you know, probably the world's leader in on-camera microphones. I've seen a lot of people using them. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll just give you a quick run through of how they kind of work. Yeah. So this mic here is a Video Mic Pro. Oh, this is um, the the highest selling on-camera microphone that we have. Okay. Um, the idea with this microphone is, uh, it's a shotgun mic, so it picks up what's directly in front and it cancels the sound to the sides of the mic. How far in front? So if I'm standing there, yep. uh, but say where Hannah is, it would yep. still pick her up nicely? It'll be, it'll be fine. The, the thing to consider is your background noise. Yes. So the noisier the space is, the closer you got to get the mic. Yeah. So there's a thing that you're always fighting in audio called your signal to noise ratio. Yeah. That's in the electronics of the gear, you want to have the highest signal to the lowest noise, but it's also in the acoustic space. So basically, in a noise in an area like this, is very noisy. Yeah. You want to have the highest signal. So the easiest way to do that is get the microphone closer. closer yeah. So we make little tiny boom poles as well, like little lightweight oh, boom great. poles that you can mount your mic onto. Yeah. And that way, even if you're a single shooter, you can still hang on to super lightweight boom poles, get the microphone just out of frame. So you don't uh, need so an extra sound close. person to hold the boom. Exactly. Oh, that would be so useful. I've yeah. been using. A microphone stand, but having someone hold it, but you always need two people then. Exactly right, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it just depends if yeah. you, especially if you've got a tripod for your camera, yes. it makes it much easier because you can set up the camera, yeah. you can still change exposure. Literally, one handed boom operation is what we've got for our Have microphone you, pop Is that what it looks like? Is no, so I'll, I'll just bear with me yeah. one second. Amazing! No, so this is our. It feel doesn't the, look very mini to me. Feel the weight of that, though. Oh, I mean, it's really the idea large. Of, yeah, so a boom pole, you want a, a boom pole that's got enough reach. Yes. Right, so this is the largest boom pole that we've ever made. It's only 125 grams with all three sections, yeah. but it is in sections, so you can remove you can them shorter and longer, depending on yeah. the length How that you long? need. And then all of our microphones that mount on camera actually have a thread in the bottom that you can yeah. mount onto a boom pole. So you just put that on, yeah. use the VC1 extension cable, to plug into this and then go directly yeah. into your camera and then you can hold the, the microphone yeah, and it'll distance. still be synced yeah. yes of course because yeah. you're running directly you're running into, into yes. the camera yeah. now if you wanted to uh, just to finish off talking about the video mic pro the, the advantages of using the video mic pro is that you have also a plus 20 decibel function on the back here right? yeah now if you consider a really nice audio recorder yeah. like a nice audio recorder like this yeah. is, is actually quite big right because right. it's an audio circuit uh, when it's squashed into a camera, it's a very low quality audio circuit. And that's yeah. why you see like a lot of the recorders that, that are de dedicated for audio are much bigger than what you could imagine the audio recorder inside the camera. Yeah. Uh, camera audio circuits are really noisy. And one of the ways to counteract that is to actually have a really nice input going into the camera. It's almost like having a really fast lens, like a 1.8 lens or something. When you let in more light, you don't have to run your ISO as high so you get less noise. Okay. Right? So with a microphone, if you've got a plus 20 dB function like this mic, yes. uh, when you plug it into your camera, the preamp of the camera that is noisy, yes. you turn it down because you've got a hotter signal coming in, yes. and then you have an all-round cleaner audio. So because you've got a high-quality audio coming in, it'll tell the camera to tone down its own audio function exactly. and it'll create less noise back from the camera exactly. perfect how and does then, someone think about that i don't know that's a really good smart smart addition yeah yeah exactly right i mean and, and that's the thing so on your camera you should always turn off auto gain as well okay so usually called agc auto gain auto control, gain control right. um what what auto gain control on a camera does is it always tries to make the audio as loud as it can possibly be so right. when i'm speaking what happens is the audio is nice and, and loud yeah. and it'll it'll turn down the the preamp a little bit but then as soon as it's silent what it does is it turns it up trying to find the sound because yeah. it always wants the sound to be loud when you turn off auto gain control turn yeah. your preamp all the way down run a mic like this on plus 20 yeah. you'll get unreal really clean audio every single time Wonderful. So that's how you vastly yeah. improve the audio on a DSLR. Yeah. Now, if you wanted a wireless solution with a clip-on mic, that's where you yeah. can look at the Rodelink Filmmaker Kit. Um, okay, yeah. Which uses a, a lapel microphone that clips yeah. onto your shirt. Uh, and then it has a separate camera mount receiver, just like this one here. Yeah. Uh, that goes onto the camera shoe. 
Will it have a long lead? No, so it's a, it's a short little lead. Okay. Um, so you have to be close. No, so the idea is that it's, it's wireless between the oh. microphone and the camera. So this is just the, the camera mount uh, receiver. And you yes. plug that directly into the audio input on the camera. Okay. And then your actual wireless transmitter. Here's uh, one of the newer ones that we've just launched yeah. uh, recently. The TX XLR right. uh, transmitter, that one is. That's an XLR transmitter that also has an input for a small yeah. lapel mic. Yeah. But we also have the Filmmaker kit, which is a belt pack transmitter. Right. Uh, so you mount it on your belt, you have the microphone clipped onto your shirt, and then you completely hands free wireless. You can walk around wherever you like. Oh, um, right. That's good for things like church preachers and sure. stuff. Sure. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Not I mean, aware of that. Yeah, even I can like, just imagine that being yeah. used. Yeah. Or if you're using interview setups where you need to have a couple of different okay. people mic'd up and you've yeah. got multiple inputs on your audio recorder, you can yeah. do that. Okay. Um, yeah, but for the all round on camera, run and gun, just yeah. start recording that's, mic, that's, you want something like yeah. this. And it's suspension mounted as well, so when you adjust uh-huh. the settings on your mic, on your, on your camera, sorry, yeah. you don't get the audio no. kind of disturbed by that. Uh, it just goes into a standard 3.5 yes. cable. Yeah. Very easy. Uh-huh. You've got a whole bunch of accessories available for them. Isn't yeah. It? Are you finding, cause, uh, because we're community television with very low budgets, are you mm-hmm. finding the kind of people you're talking to? Because um, we're interested in this show and what's yeah. drawn you. Obviously, you're a big name and you would definitely come here. Yeah. But what kind of people are you talking to, uh, finding coming to the stand? Oh, look, it's, it's a big mix, to be honest. So we've got a lot of... Uh, like people that are at this show, especially like gaming audio, that do like live broadcasting of their gaming. Um, you know, everything from you know like big budget kind of broadcasters like the BBC through to people that have their own YouTube channels that they're running. You know, like the, it's a, a big range. Um, yeah. And of course, a lot of people that are interested in the music business in terms of distributing products and things like that as well. But um, but this is one of our favourite shows at Rogue. We don't we do not do you know a whole lot of shows around the world, but uh, IBC is definitely one of the ones that we're at every year to show off some of our new products, that's for sure. So it's not your first time in Amsterdam? No, I think it's the third time now, so yeah. I generally do a, a, the trade shows that we do do at Rogue, because I mean we're miles away, we're in Sydney so yeah. in Australia, so it's a long flight every time we come over to... To Europe, so we usually do uh, IBC, and we'll do another one in the music industry called uh, Music Messe in Frankfurt, okay. Pro Light and Sound. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you really have selected this one as one of the most important ones. Definitely, okay. especially for the camera industry, the broadcast industry, this is the, the show to be at, that's for sure. Right, how did that happen in Amsterdam, you know, in the yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. I mean, it's probably, the show's been big for longer than I've been in the industry, that's for sure. But it's just one of those things when when a trade show kind of in a certain region takes off, it, it you know, when it becomes the most important trade show, it stays that way for a Snowballs. long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of regional trade shows around because obviously not everyone can get to Amsterdam, uh, but you'll find people here from all over the world, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, Exhibit A, I'm from Sydney and I just flew 26 hours to get here, so... Yeah, and then how does it work? Do you get time to enjoy Amsterdam while you're here? Oh, usually I'll have, you know, like either a day at the start or a day at the end, uh, but, I mean, most of the time you're here on the booth for uh, the whole day, Maybe go out for dinner or something after hours or whatever, but yeah, it's good fun, but it still works. So. Yeah. Everyone's always complaining about there's no hotel rooms in the city where the IBC. Yeah. Is that a struggle? Well, I use Airbnb these days, so yeah. it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. You'll, um, you'll find a really nice place, probably half the cost of a hotel, but it's more about the experience for me. You, you get a place that has like a washer, a dryer, because I'll often travel three weeks, four weeks at a time yeah. in one suitcase. So it's always yeah. good to kind of feel a little bit more at home when you have your own yeah. apartment rather than just a hotel room. So. There's a lot of Airbnb in Amsterdam now as sure. well. Yeah. How many in your team are here? Only me from Road. Oh, uh, but we're actually on the booth of our... Oh, yeah, this right. is the stand of our, our UK distributor, uh, oh. uh, Source Distribution yeah. uh, in HHB Communications. They look after our distribution in the UK right. and they have this, uh, this is one of their main shows that they come to. So there's brands here like TC Electronics, right, Zoom, there's a whole bunch of different brands on this particular oh, yeah, stand. Oh, yeah, Zoom, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this uh, section here and some of the display products, this is the road right. section of the booth. So. I'm so glad we found the road guy. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for um, coming over. Yeah. Oh, so I was going to say, oh, do you all your team stick together, but you're on your own. Solo. Okay. Well, yeah. have a good time in Amsterdam. Thank you very much. Lovely Thanks to for meet talking you. to us. Yeah, cheers.